In the previous tutorial, we created and animated the character's head to act as a driver for our truck. We now want to give the viewer the impression that this character is inside the truck's driving compartment. Of course, we know that in fact it is not in the cab, but tucked away behind the scenes. We will create some simple camera cuts to establish the close-ups and create the illusion the character is driving the vehicle. First we need to set up our camera. Until now, we have been using the default design view camera. We need to create a camera entity whose position we can animate. In the assets window, we have a folder called helpers. Opening this up reveals a couple of assets we can use as stand-in geometry. One of these is called camera dummy.dff. We will use this to attach our camera behavior to. First, in the game explorer, make the world folder the active working folder and expand its contents. Select the camera dummy asset and drag it into the workspace. A new entity is created. We'll name this camera. In the game population stacker, select the behaviors tab and from the sequence folder, choose the see seek camera behavior. Attach this to the camera entity. Drag and drop the camera to the sequence and select its matrix as the item to keyframe. By animating this, we will create our camera cuts. Right click on the sequence bar and choose Design View Camera Editor as the keyframe type to edit. Make sure to toggle the Design View Keyframe Generation button on. Without this active, no keyframes will be created. Move the playhead to frame 0 and navigate in the Design View to somewhere suitable for an opening shot. As you do so, you will notice that a keyframe is also created at the playhead's position. In the real world, you would most likely have a storyboard to work to, so the shots would already be decided upon. But for these tutorials, we are in a fortunate position of being able to improvise. Move the playhead forward and move the viewpoint to create a reverse angle establishing shot. A second keyframe is created. As always, the position of the keyframe on the timeline can be altered at any time to control when the camera cuts take place. Create a third keyframe without moving the viewpoint by right-clicking and selecting Create Keyframe to hold the shot for a given length of time. After say two seconds, dolly the camera forward toward the truck's cab to end it just before the first head close-up. Right-click between these two frames and select Linear Interpolator from the menu. The camera now cuts between two static shots and then tracks forward, zooming in on the cab. We now want to cut away to a close-up of the driver. Placing the playhead in a suitable position, select the driver head in the Game Explorer and hit F3 to frame it in the design view. Adjust the viewpoint to the desired position. When the playhead is scrubbed over these frames, you will see the camera zoom, then cut to the head. We need the cut to take place as the head animation begins, so adjust the keyframes to the appropriate position on the timeline. Our cutscene is beginning to take shape. To view it on the target, we will need to set up some custom messaging. Select the World Entity and access its Attributes panel. Under Rendering Events, you will find the Start Render Event attribute. Here, we can define a custom start message. Let's call it Seek Camera. Select the camera entity to display its attributes. Here we set the render in message to be I message do render and the render out message to be our custom Seek Camera message. Now if we launch our active target using the launch button on the toolbar and then build and connect our data is compiled and passed to the target as before. Make sure that the director's camera is disabled. If we now select our sequence player entity and send a start event message by clicking the blue arrow, you will see that the sequence begins playback on the target, complete with the camera cuts we have defined.
by entering the message iMessage Start System as a start event and building and connecting again. You'll see that the sequence playback now begins automatically.